Claude versus Codex, who wins? If you're not familiar with it, Claude and Codex are the premier agents from two of the major model makers. They are in the command line, so it's somewhat scary to people, but they illustrate two competing visions of where agents are going. And I've seen them both and I've played with them both and I have a sense of what is actually unfolding in terms of strategy. And I wanna lay out how different they are, give you a sense of which one you might wanna pick for particular tasks. And then in addition, if you're not a command line person or a terminal person, you're like, oh my God, yeah, that's scary, fine. We're gonna talk about how those visions actually play out into differing perspectives on non-command line agents, beyond Claude, beyond Codex, what other tools are out there and how are they evolving in line with these visions? Because as you'll see, these are fundamentally different approaches to the most important artificial intelligence question of 2026 and 2027, and actually 2025, here, here we are. So. Let's start with Claude. Claude was the first one that came on the scene. Claude's approach really evolved out of the roots of the Claude code product. It was built as an internal enabler, an internal tool at Claude, at Anthropic. And the goal was simply to give internal Anthropic employees access to a really useful general purpose agent in the command line. And initially it was released to everyone in the rest of the world as Claude Code because Anthropic made the smart inference that most people who sit there and type text into a command line are gonna be familiar enough to not be scared of the word code and they might use it for coding, which lots of the technical team at Anthropic was doing anyway, so call it Claude Code, it's a simplifier. But people don't know that Claude was being used by the marketing team at Anthropic, is being used by the legal team at Anthropic, is being used by lots of teams at Anthropic as a general purpose agent. And that gives us our first clue into the vision that Claude has and what they see as important for agents to do. And this is important because we're all gonna be living with agents now through who knows when, right? As long as we have this AI moment. Claude, envisions agents as loops that are smart with tools. And let me get into that. Essentially what Claude thinks an agent should be, what Anthropic thinks an agent should be, is a tool that can go out, be a general purpose agent, collect other tools through the model context protocol approach with Anth which Anthropic also pioneered, and come back and do a task and check in with you. And so think of it as, Anthropic's vision is the agent is going to go help you with writing, going to go help you with Excel, going to go help you with code. It kind of doesn't care. It's designed to be general purpose and it can call the tools it needs to call smartly to get that done. So if it needs to go get like a Python library to do mathematical calculations so it can get into Excel, it'll do that, right? If it needs to go understand and remember the skill it's using to code uh, a React component for coding, it'll go do that. You get the idea. It calls tools and increasingly those tool calls are very transparent through this MCP concept where you can call in a tool through a special server. And so, it can go search the web through an MCP. It can go call in your Figma designs through an MCP. It can call in lots and lots of things that will help you do work. But the core of the agent loop is very simple. It is you ask the agent to go do a general purpose task for you. The agent is smart enough to infer this is what Nate wants. And it goes off and it calls the tool and it does the work and it comes back. This makes working with Claude feel very collaborative. It feels collegial for lack of a better term. And what, what Anthropic wants is a vision of the future where we are working collaboratively with agents. We have our mini-me's, our agents. Those agents may have sub-agents, which is something Claude specifically enables now. So you can have a master Claude agent running mini-me's of itself with different contexts. If that gives you a headache, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it, but you can. Right, And the vision is that this general purpose agent is sort of scalable and helps you to be more effective, helps you to do your job, and helps you to complete higher quality work. This makes a lot of sense when you think about the approach to the releases that Anthropic has had so far, right? Like they've not just released Claude code, 
they focused on releases that further this general purpose, agent in a loop with tools kind of vision. Excel comes to mind, the PowerPoint release comes to mind. I've talked about those on this channel and it's been super important to see that Claude has built not a special purpose Excel agent, not a special purpose code agent, but a general purpose large language model that is able to call the tools it needs to get all of these different tasks done. You're not really calling a different Claude for these different things. And in fact, Anthropic has sort of belatedly realized that maybe they shouldn't have branded this Claude code and they started to walk back the Claude code branding just a touch and they're just calling it sort of a Claude agent SDK these days. And that's fine, right? Like people will still probably call it Claude code or they'll wh whatever. It the, the point is that the general purposeness is intact and Anthropic is recognizing how powerful it is and they're, and they're building against it. Let's move over to Codex. Codex is such a different vision. Codex is a linear flow vision of tasking. It's not just in Codex, it's also in the agent builder that OpenAI released. You see an agent fundamentally in a linear flow according to most of what OpenAI has been releasing and it's structured. And what's interesting is that that is also not coincidentally how people find ChatGPT works really well when you're calling it in the API, when you're asking it to do things, even if you're prompting it in the chatbot, giving it the structure to do this and then come back to me really helps. I've talked a fair bit about how prompt sensitive ChatGPT5 is. That's another way of saying it is dependent on you to structure and ask, and it will go and do a task and come back. That and so you might think, oh, is that a loop, Nate? Are we saying the same thing? It's not. It's not because a chat GPT workflow, whether it's the agent builder or whether it's the way you think about Codex, it's framed as beginning and end. It's framed as a line, not a circle. And I know that sounds silly, but it, it matters a lot because Claude feels like and acts like it's always on always in a loop, being your general assistant, Codex, and even a lot of the chat GPT-5 conversations I have in the chatbot is much more task oriented. It's in line with that agent builder vision that they outlined at Dev Day this week, where it needs structured context, a prompt, maybe an input like a document, and then it's gonna go and do the task and finish it and get it done correctly. And when you are building agent flows at the enterprise level, that can be very helpful, right? You can go out and have confidence that chat GPT and the API will do exactly what you tell it to do with the context and come back and the task will be done. The ticket will be triaged, whatever you're tackling. So if you think about that, look at how that changes, how we work with agents. That vision is so different, right? We need to take the load of managing the context. We need to make sure it's crisp and clear. It is implicitly, I would argue, a vision of developers building meaningful scaled agents that do specific work tasks at the big company enterprise, maybe middle-sized company scale. And if you wanna pull it down and you start to look at the uh, chat GPT in app store experience, they're also suggesting that we consumers will have that implicitly by having these apps that do things for us. And it will also feel like, oh, I wanna go check my QuickBooks as a small business owner and I can do that. Or, you know, I wanna go and, and look at how my uh, Spotify streams are doing as a creator, and then you can go and do that, right? Fine. The, the point is that the task is what matters and accomplishing the task is the definition of success for the agent. Whereas at Anthropic and with Claude Code, it feels more like working together and getting stuff done over time is the purpose. And we are building a collaborative relationship with Claude Code and Claude Code does many things for us. I think that shows up a bit in the way responses come through. I have given identical asks to Claude Code and to Codex just to see what would happen. And what I find is that Claude Code tries to take that general agent in a loop with tools approach where it will throw multiple tools at the problem. It will come back with a thorough analysis of the problem. And I intentionally made it a very open-ended analysis prompt. And it will give me a really full readout. And Codex is going to take the approach of this is a task I need to get done. And it will come back quickly, token efficiently, and it will give me a 
pretty much correct, but extremely short and succinct analysis. This is why Codex is leaning on some custom modeling of GPT-5, that particular command line interface. If you're typing in the terminal to Codex, it's not GPT-5 vanilla, it's a special model. It's a special model that's designed to be token efficient with specific problems. And so in this case, when I gave Codex the analysis, it came back and it was like, oh, I don't need a lot of tokens for this. I'm just gonna give you exactly what you need. And it was like 15 lines, right? And clog code came back and it was like eight pages. People think about that from a token consumption perspective and that can be very helpful, right? If you're doing this hundreds of times as Codex is often envisioned it, you know, that they envision this working at big company scales, that's super efficient, right? I get exactly what I need. I don't need anything more. And then the other side of Codex kicks in if you have a very difficult problem. If you have something where you need Codex to work independently for a long period of time on a very hard problem, especially a coding problem, it's a specialized agent for coding. It will go against that task and it will solve it. It's, it's sort of like it was designed specifically to target high impact coding problems in large code bases at enterprise scale. But it all keeps coming back to Codex being designed along with the rest of the chat GPT agent vision as we give the LLM a task and it goes and does it and it accomplishes it. And there's an end point to that. I think this is really important. I think it's important not just for whether you pick Claude or Codex, which we'll get into. It's also important for how we think about how we want to collaborate with AI going forward, because we have to kind of pick a vision that we want to sign up for, and it leaks into the rest of the Asian ecosystem. So if you want to pick Claude, you're sort of voting for a future where you want to collaborate with AI almost like a peer, and you want to be able to give your Claude a number of different tasks to go after during the day, and it will pick up the tools it needs, and it will go get them done and come back. That is very broadly the vision that we are starting to see come together from Anthropic. On the other hand, if you are someone who's like, no, really, I need to build production systems. I need to make sure I have exactly what I need for this agent. It needs to be done correctly every time. I cannot fool around with, did the Claude code come back with the right eight pages of analysis or not? It must be correct every time. I want, for lack of a better term, more deterministic intelligence. Fine, that's fine. At that point, you need to sign up with Codex. You need to sign up not just with Codex, but that's something that implies an agent builder world, right? Where you are deterministically saying, this is exactly what I want and I want to get it done. I'm not here to tell you which is better or worse. I'm actually here to give you a sense of the underlying agent, agent vision so you can look at it and say for yourself, this is what I need for my tool set. The agent market is so big, it is absolutely possible we have multiple winners here, right? We have Codex winning maybe for enterprise workflows and for highly deterministic workflows where you need to get it right every single time or for workflows that are extremely complex and accomplishment looks like solving this really tricky bug in this really particular place. And then you may have a winner with Claude where Claude is a general purpose agent that works really effectively for you. And different people will have different opinions on that. The rest of the agent ecosystem is falling into one of those camps. If you look at N8N, N8N is a drag and drop agent builder, or you can use JSON to program it. I've talked about it before. It's really cool. One of the things that's nice after the agent builder launch is that N8N doesn't lock you into the open AI ecosystem and people appreciate that. Well, it still has the same vision of the agent that open AI has. They go and they do a task and they come back. They go and they do a task and it's accomplished, right? It's not a ongoing conversation. It's not an ongoing general purpose piece of work. They go and get it done and that's it, right? You can grade whether the agent got it done correctly or not with N8N and with any of OpenAI's agents. And there are others too. Lindy.ai comes to mind, very consumer focused, but the agents do things and they either do them correctly or incorrectly and then it's done. It's, it's a linear flow. Whereas there are others who are building much more collaborative agents. And what's interesting is that they're not just for work. Like what's, what's interesting about Anthropic is they're going after the working world, but some of the people building agents not in the working world are adopting a very similar approach. So as an example, the Tolan AI companion has taken off in the last couple of months. It's not a working thing. It's an always on AI companion you can talk to. And 
it feels very much like a sort of general purpose conversational agent. Except in this case, the agent's job is not to operate tools and build you Excel files. The agent's job is actually to call upon its internal resources and be an interesting conversational part of it. And so Anthropic has picked the harder version, right? Like they have to get the tool call calls right. They have to sort of build the outputs and come back to you. But the loop is there. It's always on. It listens. It comes back. The loop is there. We are going to see a great split in 2026 between people, enterprises who want to have general purpose conversational agents that run sort of always on and they're calling tools and they're able to accomplish multiple tasks for you, like cloud code, and a specific vision of the future that is all about deterministically, intelligently solving hard tasks and being able to say done, a linear vision of the agentic future. And that matters a lot because it, it shapes your and mine day, right? Like, is my day going to be working with Claude Code and sort of collaborating together? Is my day going to be defining a bunch of very specific accomplishments that I need to get done for Codex? We're going to all find out together. Enterprises are going to pick different sides. People are going to have strong, strong preferences. But at least we should understand what the stakes are, right? Like, we should ladder back and not just look at what happened with Agent Builder, not just look at is Codex good or bad on its own but actually understand what are the competing visions of our future, of the agentic AI future, and which do we want to sign up for? So I'm going to do more of a deep dive on, on Codex soon. I've done on, some on Claude Code. I wrote a guide on how Claude Code can help you as a non-technical person. But if you are curious about which to choose, I would invite you to ask yourself, how do you want to spend your day? Do you want to evolve the task together with the AI, more of a Claude Code approach? and work organically back and forth? Or do you really need the precision and, the, and you're willing to do the structure that gets you a codex-like experience? I think those are underweighted reasons to pick one or the other. I think most people are asking which is the better coding agent per se, but I think that's kind of the wrong question because it's going to go back and forth and you'll have to look at SWE bench scores and argue over which one is better for which code language, etc. It's more interesting to say these trajectories are fundamentally different. Which one do I want to sign up for? What's your agentic vision of the future?